Argentina is famous for their excellent beef and for their sultry dance, the tango. But they're also famous for creating the first feature-length animated films. Carino Cristiani was the filmmaker, and his first feature-length cartoon was in 1917. It's said he was an inspiration to Walt Disney, who visited the studio on the outskirts of Buenos Aires. That brings us to our Argentinian-inspired menu. Grilled flank steak with chimichurri sauce, celery -ac fries, and crisp carrot salad. I'm Garrett Schack, and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Hola! Today we prepare Argentinian grilled flank steak with chimichurri sauce, celery -ac fries, and a crisp carrot salad. Let's get to it. First thing we want to do is get our celery -ac fries prepared to get into the oven. We've got uh, a large celery -ac, sometimes also called a celery root. This is a really delicious vegetable that has sort of celery and parsley flavors to it. Just open it up. Cut both nice flat even edges and then with a nice sharp knife, we're just going to run it down and peel away some of that uh, some of that skin. Go. If you can do it in one slice, that's the uh, the best. A chef once told me that when I'm peeling uh, cantaloupes and honeydews, dozens and dozens of them at a time, I wanted one slice each time. Of course, I haven't mastered that yet and haven't been peeling as many fruits lately. But uh, there we are. Get this out of the way when we cut our potato uh, or our uh, celery -ac fries here. Cut nice sort of finger width uh, slices here. Stack it all up again, several of them all up again. And we're gonna cut sort of what would be called a Pont Neuf style potato if we were using potatoes or using French cuisine, but we're down in Argentina today. There we go. Capital of Argentina, Buenos Aires. Uh, I was surprised to find out that that's actually the fourth largest city in the world. Pretty amazing. Some vegetable oil. Season these up with some salt and pepper. We'll get them onto a baking sheet and into the oven, 350 degrees. Tossy toss. A bit more salt. They smell so lovely. This is a wonderful uh, vegetable to use, not only for, uh, for this type of application, but really great raw in a salad or something like that. Adds a bit of crunch to it. Okay, now place it out on a baking sheet as such. And then just layer them out evenly here. There you go, spread them apart. You want to get some nice golden brown color on them. And then pop those straight into the oven. It's going to take about 20 minutes or so. Again, 350 degrees. There we are. Now while those are in there, let's move this out of the way. Let's get on our uh, sort of the, the special ingredient for today's show. Chimichurri sauce. Chimichurri is this super flavorful, really, really versatile uh, um, sauce, I guess, that's, uh, that's common all throughout Argentina. Hey, keep it down over there. Uh, I'm getting a little wild and crazy, hey? Uh, so it consists of fresh herbs, some vinegar, some chilies. We want to pack all of that into our, uh, into our food processor here. So I just like to chop it up a little bit so it doesn't have to work too hard. The nice thing about uh, using fresh cilantro is these little stem bits here, you can actually use those right in there. They're packed full of flavor, unlike uh, parsley stems. In they go. Let's do the parsley as well. So like I said, the parsley stems aren't, uh, aren't as flavorful. It's okay if you get a few of them in there, but you don't need the whole thing. Looks like a lot of parsley, so we'll just use a little bit less. There we go. Chop all that up. Get it into our food processor. It smells fresh already. It's incredible. Parsley is another one of those really versatile herbs that uh, you find in lots and lots of cuisines. Okay, some fresh garlic. In we go. Ah, use the whole thing. Garlic's good, right? Keep the vampires away. Salt. It's gonna help grind it all up as well as add that flavor we're looking for. And then in here, we have a little bit of cumin and some, uh, and some chili flakes. Those. I'm gonna pulse that together before I add my liquid. See it already starting to come together there nicely. Okay. 
Red wine vinegar. Now this is going to be a sauce, so we're adding a fair bit. And then some olive oil. Alright, got another blitz. So this chimichurri sauce is uh, traditionally served in Argentina on steaks, but it would also be amazing on fish or chicken. It's such a vers versatile dish, or such a versatile sauce, that's for sure. Okay, looks great. I'd actually like to add just a bit more parsley. Went a little shy on it there. So I'm just going to chop a touch more, pack it in. Should be a wonderful green color. Get some more of that off. Go. Oh. Should be the trick. Perfect. Perfect, look at that. Look at the colors in there. Doesn't that look great? Let's have a little taste. See how we're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wonderful acidity. It has this real sort of acid flavor from that, uh, from that tomato, or sorry, from the uh, red wine vinegar. But also, you can get that freshness from the herbs, a little bite from the chilies. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. Now, before we go to break, let's touch base on this flank steak really quickly. Flank steak is a lesser common known uh, cut of beef, uh, but still wonderful in flavor. Doesn't have too much fat in it, but you have to know how to cook it properly. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our Argentinian grilled flank steak with chimichurri sauce, celery act fries, and crisp carrot salad. But first, right after the break, we're gonna get out of the studio. You'll wanna stick around for that. Here in Victoria's first schoolhouse built in 1886 and now converted into the gorgeous Barden Banker Gastro Pub. Chef Richard Lutman's down in the kitchen, just designed a new menu, and we're gonna get a chance to get down there and have a look. Spent a lot of time at a bar like this, not often you get to go down into the kitchen. Let's get going. Hey Richard. How, How you doing, Garrett? Nice Good to see you. Buddy. So uh rotisserie chicken, I understand. Rotisserie chicken, yeah, new on our menu. We're uh gonna sample one out today and I'm gonna just sort of show you the quick process of what we do to get it going. Absolutely, because I know, uh, if I know you, I know it's not just as easy as throwing it on a skewer and putting it in the rotisserie. So why yeah. don't you walk me through a few of the steps that it takes to get to them? Okay, we, uh, I'll, I'll sort of just explain the process really quick. Uh, we make our brine, yeah. uh, so we got some salt, some brown sugar, uh, a few different herbs there, some basil, thyme, a little bit of rosemary, lemon. Nice. And we brine them for 12 hours, so it's typically overnight. And next day, uh, come in in the morning, basically take them out of the brine, let them dry a little, put them on our skewers, and then we season them up with whatever seasoning we want to do. Today we're going to do a little garlic rosemary rub. Nice, that looks awesome. Yeah, and so, that's, that's just garlic, rosemary, a little olive oil. Nice, and then just you just blended. rub that all on and, uh, we're gonna, and, then, and then skewer it? Yeah, we're going to rub it all on here. Uh, give a little demo. Perfect. Oh. Not sparing any ex ex uh, excess here, hey? This no, looks great. you gotta really, really get it in there inside the cavities a little too. I guess that's one of the keys with rotisserie, right? Because it's constantly sort of almost self-basting, isn't it? it yeah, it basically that makes it very juicy. Yeah. Uh, it's constantly being dripped in its own fat from the chickens above it. Nice. We get our sword here. It makes it look easy like a pro, hey? Nice. Done it a few times. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So that's basically, our bird, we'd, we'd fill it up with four, yeah. and then we head over to the rotisserie. Can we go have a look at that? Absolutely, All let's right, do that. let's go. All right, so here it is, hey? So, Appropriately named the legend. Yeah. I love it. So we're gonna just open the doors up, and these top guys are ready to roll. Literally, hey? Yep. Rocking and rolling. Just slip them off. Awesome, that looks so good. I see exactly what you mean by the, how they sort of self base the juice is rolling off the chicken as you go. Just slide that little guy off there. Awesome. Pop that back in there. And now we go to the plate? Yeah, to the plate. Perfect. All right, I can hardly wait to get into this, Richard. So what's the next process? The next process is uh, we serve it, basically. So I'm gonna cut the strings off here. Yeah. 
and we're just gonna slip the backbone out. So Richard, I know uh, from knowing you for a few years now that uh, you're a super talented chef. Where did where did you pick up all your skills and training? Like where did you study? I I did uh, my apprenticeship at the Four Seasons Hotel in Vancouver. Yeah. And uh, moved around from there. The last little stint with Four Seasons was in uh, Las Vegas. Oh really? Then came back. The city to... that never sleeps, hey? Yeah. Nice. How was that for you? It, it was good. Yeah. I, I liked it. Busy, nonstop. Oh, I bet. I bet. All right, so. So we're just gonna cut the backbone out here. Oh, look at that. You can smell all the herbs and spices on that chicken. It smells incredible. Look how juicy that is, Richard. Brilliant. And we'll just tuck that in there. And now if I came into the restaurant, this is how uh, I would order it? This is how you'd order it. You can order a, a whole, a half, depending on what you want. Yeah. And we got a little sauce. Oh, nice, look at that. Some kale and some chanterelles. And our little gravy bowl. That's oh. a little, little bit of chicken gravy. That looks fantastic. And basically, dinner served. Well, do you mind if uh, you want to sample it with me? Let's get in there. I mean, yeah, I'm a dark meat kind of guy, but uh, I don't know about you. Like the breast, but I like the juiciness of the dark meat, so nice. I'm, I'm with you there. There's a guy who knows how to eat chicken. Went right for the oyster muscle. It's delicious. Mm. Mm. Oh, nice Richard. tender. Got some good salt in there. Yeah, that's incredible. This, I mean, the skin's the best part, really. Look at that, but so juicy. I'm gonna dip into the gravy here a little bit. Some of that chanterelle and kale. Mm. That is incredible. Thank you so much for bringing a rotisserie grill to Victoria. That's Thank beautiful. you, Garrett. Thanks, Richard. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not leaving without eating some more of this chicken, just so you know, though. Back to the kitchen. We're working on Argentinian grilled flank steak with chimichurri sauce, celery up fries, and crisp carrot salad. So let's uh, deal with our flank steak here a little bit. We want to season it up. A little salt and pepper. At this point, at this stage, that's all we're doing. Now down in Argentina, they, they boast having some of the best beef in the entire world. It's mostly grass fed from, the, uh, from what they call a pampas or their, uh, their ranges. And the gaucho out there ride around feverishly, herding all these cattle and so on, making sure they're eating well on all that grass. They actually have one of the largest ranches, or pampas, in the entire world. So they take pretty good, pretty, uh, pretty heavy pride in their, in their beef program down there. Now, I've seasoned this up fairly heavily with uh, salt and pepper uh, on both sides, of course. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to cut it down right down the middle because this is a, a hefty portion here for, sort of, for, for two people. Something I want to draw your attention to here is how the structure of the meat is. And this is really important in understanding why a flank steak, when done incorrectly, can be, uh, can be a little tough. So you can see the muscles, sort of long linear muscles in here. Now that's one layer of them. The muscles actually crisscross, sort of like this. And what happens is, in the cooking, they, they start to constrict. And what we need to do is slice it on a heavy bias once it's cooked. And that will sort of cut those connective tissues and make it, uh, make it a little bit more tender. Also, the cooking technique uh, as well as far as not overcooking your steak is really important in this stage. We have a cast iron pan on here. I'm gonna give it a little spray with some cooking oil. I don't wanna add oil to the pan because we're cooking in the house and that's gonna just you know create a ton of smoke. So straight into our grill pan again, nicely seasoned, lots of pepper and salt, just onto a nice hot pan. We're gonna let that sear on both sides, probably you know five minutes or so uh, on, e on each side. Okay, now let's work on our crisp carrot salad. Steak's cooking away there. What we need is one of these fancy machines. You won't find them in Argentina, but uh, they're really handy for making this beautiful salad we're about to make here. So we wanna just, using a nice sharp mandolin, being careful not to cut ourselves, run the carrot through the mandolin like this. We're gonna get these wonderful little matchstick uh, looking carrots. Okay, take your time because it is very, very sharp. So, now we've got some carrots there. Those into our bowl. 
And we want a little bit of red onion. So red onions are delicious, but they can be overpowering. So just be careful not to uh, put too much in there. We're gonna use about sort of a quarter to a third of this onion here. Just dice it up and into our bowl. Now to add a bit of freshness to the dish, we want some mint. Love mint and carrots. I think it goes together really, really well. And some fresh parsley. Again, that versatile parsley. So not only is this going to tie together our dish really nicely, but it'll also uh, add a little, uh, little freshness. So chop it up, fairly fine, like so. And dance around a little bit as you're chopping, that's always fun. Now for the dressing. For the dressing, we've got some acidity. Always need a bit of acidity. A nice lemon here. I feel it's nice and juicy. Is it right in there? So it's important not to do this too far ahead of time. You know, this is the, you want to sort of dress this just before you're ready to go to the plate. That's what's going to help keep our crispness. Uh, before we go any further, let's have a look at our flank steak. Maybe give it a flip. See how we're doing. Oh yeah, that looks great. Lovely grill marks. You can see it's still rare in there. Um, it's going to be really delicious. We'll let that cook away. A little bit more lemon juice. That should do the trick. Some salt. Some vegetable oil. I'm just using a very basic vegetable oil here. I don't want to add any extra flavor, uh, like using olive oil or something like that. And now for some sweetness. We want all those balances. We're going to use raisins for sweetness. Carrots, raisins, mint, parsley, all really wonderful things. They go so nicely together. Let's give that a quick stir. Ah, oh, why not? Let's, let's get messy here. Throw things around a little bit. It's all about having fun in the kitchen, right? This could be uh, in part of the Kitchen Olympics to see how far you could uh, toss that around. Let's give this all a little taste here. Mmm. Wow, that's awesome. So refreshing. A little bit of the raisin in there to add some sweetness. Really, really nice. Now, I'm gonna put this straight on the plate because we're just about ready to go. There. Vibrant colors. Sure to impress, there we are. Tuck that away and then we'll go check on our celery fries. Go check on our celery act fries here. Oh, beautiful, golden brown. They look lovely. There. Gonna give them just a little bit of extra salt and then just sort of toss them around with my fingers a little bit. They're nice and crispy. Kind of, you can almost hear the crispiness, can't you? And then we want to kind of tuck them into our little cup here. More. Look at that, don't those look great? They smell amazing. Fabulous. And then we'll go have a look at our flank steak. All right, we've given this its fourth and final flip, I guess, as we, as we would call it. Uh, so now we have these lovely diamond marks on there, which is the, uh, you know, the, the, the fancy presentation that we're looking for on, on all our steaks. Um, what we want to do is just kind of give it a little poke. It's starting to feel pretty good. We're getting really close to that, uh, what I'm looking for in a sort of medium rare, just a little bit above medium rare. Now it's important, if you undercook it, it's going to be tough and chewy. If you overcook it, it gets dry and, and tough as well. So it's important to kind of make sure to have this one around that sort of medium rare to medium stage. Now let's pull the steak off. Let me make some room here. Bench, wipe it down a little bit. And we'll pull our flank steak right out of the grill. There we go. Looks lovely, steaming away. Let's turn my grill pan off so we can kind of cut down on the smoke. There we go. Now, you'd want to let this rest just for a few minutes, but because we want to get this thing onto the plate and start eating, I'm starving after all that pato we've been playing all day. We're going to, uh, we're going to slice it right away. So, Again, this is the trick with flank steak. You want to cut it on a nice, heavy bias with a sharp knife, and that's going to help sever those tissues that I was talking to you about. Oh, look at that. Beautifully cooked, nice and moist. Cutting it on that heavy bias again. Now, let's take that whole piece. You can see, it looks lovely. Lots of redness in there still. Just get that right over to our plate. Okay. Oh, 
open it up so you can see it a little bit. And now, of course, our chimichurri sauce. So this is enough sauce for all sorts of, uh, all sorts of dishes. So you can put that in your fridge for definitely a week or so, and that would be uh, just fine for your next meal as well. Oh man, that looks great, smells delicious. Can't wait to dig in. There you have it, Argentinian grilled flank steak with celeriac fries and a crisp carrot salad. So delicious. Now what better way to enjoy our grilled flank steak than with the perfect beverage? With me today is Lindell from Church and State Winery. How you doing, Lindell? I'm doing great, Garrett. How are you? I'm fabulous. I'm fabulous. I am so excited to try this wine. I've heard lots about it. Fabulous. Well, this is our 2011 Coyote Bowl Syrah. This is uh, an award-winning wine. You're going to find it's just going to pair perfectly with the steak. It's got lovely savory notes and this sort of peppery black pepper finish that's just going to really Perfect. highlight the steak. With that acidity, the chimichurri, and of course, red wine and steak, right? Absolutely. Perfect pairing. Mmm, smells incredible. Now, I am just going to smell. As you can see, I'm quite pregnant at the moment, so. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I'll tell you what, how about I drink for two and you can eat for two? That works. That works. <laughs> that works for me, too. Oh, delicious. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm, so, a hint of that pepper. I really like that. I think that'll wanna... really finish off the steak. Yeah, should we try a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Make some room here. And make sure we get some of that chimichurri. Go. Oh, thanks very much. You're very welcome. Now, I had mentioned uh, that this wine has won an award. Uh, this picked up a gold medal at the uh, Decanter Awards, which is one of the largest competitions in the world. Mm. And uh, to earn a gold medal, you have to be 95 points or above. So just oh, an outstanding yeah. showing for a Canadian wine. Yeah, our Canadian wine's uh, standing out in the international world. That's fantastic. Exactly. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> And your wine is equally delicious, so I look forward Here's to having well. my share of this uh, little partnership we have going here. Absolutely. <laughs> Fabulous. Check out our website. We'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, savor the flavors.